Ladies and gentlemen, please find your seats. Good morning. Call the Sunday morning session of the Maryland State Fireman Association Executive Committee to order. The chaplain will please lead us in prayer. Don't stay seated. Sunday, you have to have a sermon, okay? This is God's time. You're encroaching on God's time. This morning's scripture reading is from 107. Oh, and by the way, I'm not supposed to be here this morning. Charlie was supposed to be up here, and Charlie is still in, his, in the hotel room. He's not doing too good, so we need to keep him in prayer. This morning's scripture reading is from Psalm 107. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those who he redeemed from the land of the foe, those he gathered from the lands from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in the desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. According to research, people who are intentionally grateful for what they have report better sleep, fewer symptoms of illness, and more happiness. Those are impressive benefits. Psychologists even suggest keeping a grateful journal to improve our well-being. Write down five things you're grateful for each week. Scripture has long promoted the practice of gratitude. From the meals in marriage in 1 Timothy to the beauties of certain of creation in Psalm 104. And I noticed that this morning on the drive over here. I didn't take Interstate 68. I came over 40 and just going to the peaks of the mountains and looking over to God's majesty. It's beautiful this morning. The Bible has called us to see such things as gifts and to thank the giver for them. Psalm 107 lists five things Israel could be especially grateful for. The rescue from the desert, the release from captivity, healing from disease, safety at sea, and their flourishing in a barren land. Give thanks to the Lord, the psalm repeats, for these are the signs of God's unfaith, unfailing love. Do you have a notepad this morning? Why don't you write down five things you're grateful for? <clears throat> Some could be your marriage, or like Israel, God's rescue points in your life to date. One of the songs I was listening to coming over this morning talked about the fourth man in the fire. And I was thinking, how wonderful. You know, we usually go into a structure fire with three firefighters, right? And just think, the fourth was a fourth person in that structure fire with us. Our Redeemer is beside us and brings us out safely. Why do you think Scripture so often calls us to be thankful? What five good things are you grateful for today? Father, I'm so grateful for every good thing you brought to my life. And most of all, I'm grateful for you. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, this morning as we again gather, we continue to lift up Patty Thomas, Marsha Roth, Sharon Owens, Charlie Barnhart, Dwayne Frost, Harper, Darby Bird, Gilbert Edwards, and Jack Snowberger. Father, we just pray that you are with them, you are with their physicians and nurses, and give your hands as a great physician on their bodies. Father, continue to be with us today as we conduct the business of the association. Give us the wisdom and knowledge we need to do the right things for the association and for the fire service in Maryland. Father, we lift this all up in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the pledge.
once again a very good morning to everybody and welcome to the Dave Garraway Lookalike Contest for you guys from years and years ago. used to wear a bow tie, although uh, it's an honor of our friend Skip, oh, absolutely. You remember Dave Garraway, don't you Skip? Charles Osgood, all those guys. Gary Moore, <laughs> all the bow tie guys. Yeah, Gary Moore, remember that? <laughs> well, I've got a secret. Showing our age, showing our age here, Chief. <laughs> okay, welcome everybody and uh, if all goes well, hopefully we'll have a little bit of an early lunch this morning. Uh, Mr. President, you have a few comments? Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, we can actually see the mountains this morning and, uh, and the windmills, as uh, Chaplain just said. You know, it's, it's beautiful out here in the West. It was always beautiful when I was out here flying with uh, Trooper 5, flying over the mountains and watching the sunrise. So, you know, you don't really realize how good you really have it till you get out here. If you're, uh, skip, you're allowed to get a nosebleed out here. I know the shore's a little bit flat, so there's actually hills and valleys here in Maryland, so, you know, just, just so you know. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, he's got to figure out which position he's running for yet. He hasn't told us yet today, so maybe we'll figure that out by the time we leave. Um, but, no, great to have, have everybody back. I'll have a few announcements on the, on, on the end of it, but... Uh, it's all you, Mr. Mr. Bull. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we do have a um, a new member, or old member, new member to swear in this morning. Uh, Mr. Charlie Abrake, a past member of the executive committee, past chairman of the executive committee, will be uh, serving as an assistant treasurer. So, if the uh, past president Kurtz be so kind. One more time. Charlie, come forward. <laughs> Charlie, raise your right hand, repeating after me, using your name in place of mine. I, Ben Kurtz, do solemnly swear to uphold the Constitution and bylaws of the Maryland State Firemen's Association. I shall faithfully carry out the duties of the office to which I've been appointed. Upon completion of my term, I will turn over all records and monies to my duly appointed successor. I will do my utmost to promote, protect, and preserve the Maryland State Firemen's Association. So help me God. Congratulations, Charlie, on your appointment. And welcome back, Charlie. He never, he never left, just in a different position. <laughs> okay, to start the day, we'll go with um, all the Fire Prevention Life Safety Committees. Mr. Chairman. Please, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, in the back at the Secretary's table, there's two cards there for Phil Herlock. If you were not here yesterday or you didn't have an opportunity to sign them, please take a minute and sign them, and then I'll put them in the post today when I get home. So have them. Uh, he was in the hospital. He's now home uh, resting. But again, uh, I'm sure he would appreciate us uh, keeping him in our thoughts and prayers. And again, if you signed them yesterday, thank you. If you have not signed them, we're back at the secretary's table. Please take a moment and sign them. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mark. A uh, great friend of ours, Phil, past president Phil Herlock, uh, certainly uh, very much a part of us, so please be sure to sign the card and wish him well. Okay, start off with fire prevention and the various uh, subcommittees.
good fashion. Okay, well, in good fashion, I'll let my subcommittees go first because that's what a true leader does. Showcases their abilities. Here you go, Cindy. Thank you, Teresa. Good morning. It was a beautiful drive up here. <laughs> so, um, I filed my wristwatch report. Um, I started to put in injury prevention areas for each of the months with current links. Um, we do issue a, a calendar every year that goes January through December. It is just suggestions. Sometimes when I put that out in January, by September the links have changed. So we will continue to quarterly update these for you. There's a lot going on in May. You will see many a press conference coming both from Highway Safety as well as some of our other partners. We had a very successful fire life safety educator seminar on March 23rd. We had great attendance. Um, we had a lot of a variety of regions were represented as well as HSPAN. The out of state speaker was Lee from North Carolina. She is the Charlotte, Lee Kish, yes. She is, is the Charlotte, North Carolina Fire and Life Safety Educator and focused on middle school and high school, which was an area that was very difficult for some people to reach. Um, and she had some hints on how to get into the school systems. Ryan Whitting from Ocean City came and presented on the work they're doing out there. Lance Carroll presented on Wildland Fire, and then we had two speakers from the University of Maryland, Baltimore, um, Laura Cathcart and Chris Staten, who are all both, one is active, one is a former member of Laurel Station 10, and they talked about emergency preparedness and how they are working with staff, faculty, and students on that campus specifically to be prepared for emergencies. Um, and then Christina from Anne Arundel County talked about youth fire setting. The um, other conference that is coming up is the Maryland Highway Safety Summit, and much of our work for the next two months will be focused on getting ready for convention. Um, Ocean City PSAP has stood up and they will be manning the communication education or when to call 911, make the right call station. Holly Trego from formerly of Cecil County, now works for MIMS, is in the process of transitioning that ownership and leadership to them. As always, we are looking for volunteers. We will have an adult content specialist at each of the 10 tables, but to make this work as families come through, we really need to have not only the Fire Prevention Committee volunteers, but other volunteers. And we'll be reaching out to both the junior chiefs and the ambassadors to include them. Um, I've put in here what our plans are. Um, our grants continue to come both from Highway Safety as well as Safe Kids. Safe Kids is all material. Highway Safety is actually funded to provide us some resources. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's our Stars of Life and Right Care When It Counts awards have closed. They closed on the 29th of March. We do actually have someone nominated in each category, and I know that this organization, as well as the work we do with children and youth, struggle to get nominations for some of the awards. So I was pleased to see that every award has a nominee, and we have five children that are nominated, from um, young children who dialed 911 to high school students. The committee has not met, so I can't tell you who will receive awards, but after 30 years, most of the time, all the kids get the awards. That is not true for all the adult nominations. We do have to make some hard choices there. I am going to let Teresa talk about our November conference, which used to be a September conference, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Cindy, I will have to say the newer, the updated 911 simulators, we just had a chance to use on our spy station a few weeks ago with the EMD as it goes through, are really nice compared to the ones from years ago. So uh, uh, I used to box. use Steve back there, remember the, old, not, the real old ones, but uh, the updated ones that go through actually the EMD. Very effective. Oh, I, I nice. really, uh, okay. How much do they cost? Uh, I don't know. The county, our county purchased one, so I'm not sure. But it, was, it was well worth it. We'll look into it. Thank you, Chip. That's great. We have an iPad app that does some of that, but it does not get into the EMD, so I'm thrilled to hear about that. Thank you. Excellent. Same people that made the other box? You know? Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I would just like to touch on the ambassadors. Um, 
Back in the back on Teresa's table, there is a form for Maryland Fire Prevention Ambassadors Questionnaire. Um, it has a QR code. QR code. So if you would like, um, you can just take the piece of paper and scan over it with your phone. And on the QR code, there's a questionnaire about um, different things with the fire prevention ambassadors and trying to get the um, how we can get the program more active and different things that we could do to make the program better. So thank you. Good morning. From the sprinkler committee, uh, the report today is the same report as it's been at every meeting for the past year and a half. I'm still looking for a place to put two trailers. One we have sitting outside right now at College Park. Uh, it's going to have to be completely rebuilt at this time. And the one that we have in Easton, inside a building that's being torn down. Presently, not yet. Um, I spoke with the Talbot County Manager, Clay Stamp. He has graciously allowed us to leave it there until we have to move it. And that could be a week, it could be four or five weeks, but it's going to be very, very quickly when it happens. Uh, so again, I've asked the executive board for a year and a half, please help me find a place. I need two places to park them. Uh, they need to be inside. It has to be enough room that we can work on them inside. But it's desperate, gentlemen. That's a lot of money sitting there. And it's all going to go for naught if, in fact, we cannot find a place to put the one that is still in good condition and find a place to rebuild the one. And Teresa's got some ideas on rebuilding it and, and, and doing a different configuration. But again, we've got to have a place to work on it. We cannot rebuild it until we put it inside. My, my plight is yours. Stand Please. by. Stand by, Chief. Charlie, did um, Tim bring up to the board about storing it in the back of the building? Okay. He, I said something to Tim about it. So, well, I'll get with you when we get back. We may, that was what we were working on. Charlie's here. He's the president, so we'll see if we can. Well, you were gracious enough to call me back and tell me you had you were working on it. Thank you for that. That will be my report. Are there any questions? Not a question, just a comment. The one at College Park, you're right, it needs to be rebuilt, and the one door blew off. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That was due to uh, a past president's use of it. But, uh, yes, we're aware of that. Yes, it, and, and the, the being out in the weather, they're not designed to be out in the weather. Um, and so we've already figured that out. We're going to be spending some of the um, uh, budgeted amounts to rebuild that. When we find a place we can park it so it, it's, we're not doing things twice. Any questions for myself? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In conclusion, uh, just bringing up again from the fire marshal's office, um, the amount of fire deaths compared to last year, we are much lower than what we were. So we're doing great things for that. Um, just remind everybody, the community risk reduction um, weeks are May 18th and 19th, October 19th and 20th. So um, we, gave, we got a cache of smoke alarms from Vision 2020. I did help out Baltimore County. Uh, they had a fatal, and I was able to give them 100 smoke alarms from that. Um, so working through those things to help our, our area partners. Um, I, I'm not going to tell anybody between career and volunteer. I'll help anybody and everybody to get smoke alarms out there. Um, I did have a conversation with the Consumer Product Safety Commission's um, Carbon Monoxide Poisoning Prevention Grant Program that I announced last time. Um, they were inundated with the amount of grants that they had, and they didn't realize how much work it was going to be to review everything. Um, we were told by April 1 we would know who got the grants so that we can start the process of securing the items. But um, <coughs> They, they don't even know when they're going to be finished reviewing. So um, it kind of mimicked what the FEMA grants do, where you do your matching and then you have people that review them. But we don't even know who's reviewing the grants. So it could be their own people and we have no idea. But we still have a good opportunity because we were told that we were the only state that included maritime issues. So hopefully that will allow us the ability to receive those um, carbon monoxide alarms. And once they're done, Every county will get a cache, and then we're working on different things to get them out there. Um, as Cindy talked about this, the Youth Fire Center Intervention Program, 
Uh, myself and Brad Childress from the fire marshal's office is meeting with the attorney general because we have some questions. We can share information county to county, but we can't share uh, state to state. And that's a problem that we have. Um, I just met with Scott Custer the other day. He has a youth that's coming from across the country to one of the uh, military bases in Maryland. And he is a problem child in a sense. That's what they, they were called as a problem child. Uh, one general told the other general, expect this problem. So they want to try to get him into some kind of support program because they didn't do that where he was coming from. So hopefully we'll be able to help him there. Um, myself, Christina, and the other Christina um, will be meeting in the next couple of weeks, and we will have some more updates for everybody in the next month. Um, Ashley Polson, um, she's our intern right now. She is taking every smoke alarm, hard of hearing smoke alarm that we've ever installed in the state of Maryland, and she's making a heat map. Um, yeah, so she, well, for the last, since December 26, we've had no heat or water technically in Pikesville. So we've been working from home and I just gave her um, everything and I said, here it is. Uh, she's breaking it down by zip code and address um, we're not putting any of their contact information into the map. We're just looking at where these pins will go, and she's going to drop it on a map. And so everybody will see from the time. And what we're going to do is a color code so that each year reflects a certain color so you know what that when those alarms were installed. And then um, Lori and Bridget are both working. Uh, they could not be here this weekend. Um, we've updated the um, application process. Uh, we really need everybody to get that out there. Um, I don't know what's going on. Um, I think we have a, like, technically, like Susan and I were talking, like a growth spurt of, um, we have like all these kids that did the program, and now I've got the juniors. And, but they're, they're great kids, but I don't have them in the senior level yet. So we're, we're looking around to find um, more, and that's why the um, questionnaire was created. And then through the NFPA, um, myself and Ken Bush will be at NFPA the first weekend of the convention. Um, I'll be returning that Sunday night with him. Um, we have two meetings that we have to be at, and we'll know the national message. Hopefully by that time frame, since they did have some changes at the NFPA, we really don't know when to expect the national message. Usually by, by like history, it's always been June 1st, but lately it's been July, August, and it really doesn't give you the time to, to turn around your information. And then um, I can tell you why I had to help um, Baltimore County. The Red Cross has a heat map where they have the, and I've touted it, you know, go get with your Red Cross and you can be a part of the home um, smoke alarm program that they're doing. And um, they had a meeting with them. They were online to do the Red Cross program. They had five sites planned out that they were gonna be able to do all this stuff with. And um, the next day they received a letter from the corporate of Red Cross saying that they were not gonna be a partner. And that really crushed Jennifer. So I called Mary Kay Oppie, if you don't know her, she's the force to be reckoned with. And she helped create a whole dots program. She worked for the NFPA. She did a lot of those different things. Um, she got right on the Red Cross and now they're backpedaling because they didn't know that someone made a decision of that nature. So somebody's in trouble. So welcome to Maryland. Um, again, um, our next meeting will be Sunday, May 19th at um, 10.30 in the morning. That's gonna be at level. That's where your ambassadors need to attend. So if you do have a county representative or ambassador that's just waiting, please let us know and we'll get them the application and upload that. And again, in my closing part for this part, um, our awards are due to the fire marshal's office by April 30th. So we need them to us soon. So if you have any of your counties, please, please, please get that information to us soon. Thank you, because we have to judge them. We send them to a different uh, jurisdiction. Last year was DC. Um, this year will probably be Delaware. So uh, I just have outside people that review their stuff. And that goes along with this Silver Spring Trophy. That information comes to us first. And I have all the rules in the back for everybody, so I'll send that up to you guys again. But they were uploaded to everybody. I've shared them a couple of times. If any questions, I'd gladly take them. Questions for any of the fire prevention committees or subcommittees? I have a question. I just want to congratulate you and Cindy on a great conference. Thank you. Uh, congratulate Mifri for their dedication to your conference. It's, it's just 
gets better and better each year. So thank you very much for the opportunity to attend. So we were trying to think, and Chris, Chris can't, we, we can't do this without Chris. Um, this is, we got to debut this before you all got to debut this. And, um, and Miffrey's like, where's the big box? Well, this is it. <laughs> it, was a, it was a breeze for him this time. But no, we can't say thank you. Um, we did, um, we lost Miffrey's uh, representative, Timmy, retired. So we were able to honor him. We actually made him res um, register because he wasn't going to show up. And then we made him work. Then he says, I have 45 more days until I can work. I'm like, well, you're working right now, brother. So uh, we made him do stuff. But um, again, we can't do that without Miffrey. I do know that I started going to that conference since I was 13 years old. I'm not telling you my age, but it's 57. And, um, <laughs> and I just know that the Thurstons would pick me up from my house and I would go to that conference every year with them. So um, I know it's been going a long time and with the passing of Rocco and uh, the Mid-Atlantic Life Safety Conference, um, which will be two days this coming year, we, we're gonna have to charge because last year we had 332 people register 112 people didn't show up. So that meant a lot of money out of our pocket. So we've decided to do a two day track, one day pass or two day pass, $100 for one day, $150 for two days. But here's the kicker. You'll get certifications out of this that we have not been able to do through MIPS. Um, we're actually working for th um, uh, the fire marshal's office to get those tracks made for people for code enforcement and fire investigations. We have a track for youth fire setter program for two day that um, Mike Love's gonna come in and teach it. And you'll be able to walk out with that certification fully done. And um, we're working on ways to get, we've got a lot of sponsorships working that out with them now. But um, we were kind of scared because um, with the, it's the fire commission's responsibility to have that. Mike Love and Mike Weller are both. Um, sorry, I should, both, should say both names. But um, they will be able to, um, come in there and get that program and take care of it. Um, we have a problem in this state with youth fire setters. Right now the crime bill was um, passed by both houses. That's gonna bring back some of the crimes that a youth can be charged at 13 years old, but still arson is like buried in one of the, um, the um, I guess, codes for the fire marshal's office which used to be right there. It was like part of that list and they did not put that on the list again. But Jason did tell me that it's buried under 1401. But um, those, that's the ability that we're able to do. And this is the 65th anniversary of this conference. Um, Rocco created this program, he created Fabscom. Um, and it was kind of funny because the government, the Maryland stopped paying their bills or wouldn't pay them on time. So Rocco said, screw that. So he started Fabscom and that's how we, all the stuff got made. And that's why Fabscom runs that conference technically, but it's through the fire, fire, um, fire commission's responsibilities that we do this. But you know, we're, we're just trying to make everybody better and safer. And um, as Fire Marshal Dracy says, um, our communities come first. So we have to make concerted efforts to change the uh, mindset. So as long as we can get the stuff out there, we're gonna work really hard to make it happen. Great. Any other questions or comments? No, Teresa, I just want to say that was an excellent conference that you did. You know, I've certainly attended the last few of them, and it's good information. Uh, if we can get a few more butts in the seat, that would that would be great. I know we put the information out there, but like anything else, you know, um, when you sign up, people's got to actually show up um, for it. But it's actually good information, Cindy. You guys do an excellent job. The fire life safety work group and committee do an excellent job as well as the ambassadors and um, the uh, ladies auxiliary by helping with that. Um, you know, 79 fire deaths last year and the numbers has got to come down and hopefully we can make that resonate with our legislators that we really need to have some teeth in our fire life safety programs legislation sprinklers uh, and get Mako to get, get on board with us here. I mean that's that's a huge, huge lift. Yeah. And uh, it, it comes down to dollars and cents, on, on, unfortunately, when you're talking about builders and ad adding stuff. But what's the value of one life? And to me, I think um, MSFA as a whole um, really needs to start putting that out a lot more than what we are um, and try to reverse that. So uh, I'm not ashamed to try to embarrass some, some folks 
um, to get our point across. And maybe that might be in some additional safety messages uh, or PSAs going for, forward, just as a food for thought, there's some, some ideas. Um, but excellent job, especially uh, on Fridays with the, the work you've done with the fire marshal's office and having those meetings. You're right on point with the uh, partners with that. And I want to say excellent job that you, you always do and you always put it out there right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you want us to do can cancer right now? While she's up here, sure. Okay. So um, our save the date is April 28th. It's uh, for an evening stroll through Annapolis. You do not have to walk all of Annapolis to do this. We will kindly take your $25 registration fee for a nice, nice mug. Um, so we have the flyers in the back. I gave you all another flyer this morning. With the QR code, you can scan it. We make it very easy. You can register up to 10 walkers. And then we have um, a program after Stan and Joe's, which we've already received our first $1,000 sponsor from um, the West Annapolis Fire Department, Station 35. So that means that money will go to the Maryland Fire Rescue Memorial Foundation. Um, I received a possibility of a $500 sponsor um, waiting to get that, so I don't know how that's gonna come over, but um, that will be there. We have walk sponsors for $300, and then we have a turn sponsor for 150, and we have a couple of those, and then we have a walk sponsor also. So again, please, please, please get this out there. Um, it's a good time. We're trying to help both causes, and um, we're just trying to make things better for everybody. Thank you. Susan. Um, good morning. Um, shattering what Teresa said, get your walking shoes ready. The MSFA, LAMSFA Cancer Support Walk is less than a month away. Check out all the details on the MSFA website where you will find the registration information, sponsorship, registration, and walk route. Please take note of the new, new time. Registration and check-in is at 3 p.m. and the program and walk begins at 4, not in the early morning this year. <laughs> Join us for the after walk party at Stan and Joe's for dinner and drink specials to, ben to benefit the Fire and Rescue Memorial. We look forward to seeing everyone on April 28th. We, today, today, we are distributing six gift cards. We are still working on redoing the application for the gift cards. We just created a Gmail account for the, MS, for the MSFA Cancer Support Group so that multiple people on the committee can open it so it's not just one person opening the form where we're running into right now, where the past chairman is the only person that can open the form. We look forward to working with everyone. Um, please also remind your members of this benefit. Reach out if you need anything. <laughs> Reach out if you need anything. Respectfully submitted, Susan Hilton. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, thank you for your work. Yep. Question, Teresa, just for uh, personal information and knowledge, and, and knowledge, are you going to have motorized scooters available for Charlie and me? You know what? There's an electric car downtown, and I know who drives that thing, and I will have that there for you. <laughs> <laughs> They got, they got a segue for you, Chip. Look, somebody asked me if I could walk in. I said, you can walk it right to the bar if you want to. I don't care. <laughs> I just want to take your money. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Okay, let's go with the uh, public information branch. And we start off with uh, Ron Watkins following the volunteer trumpet. So we'll do uh, historical, I don't believe Frank's here, and marketing after that. Good morning.
morning, Ron Watkins reporting for the Public Relations Committee, and I was decided to make sure I had a seat near the front so I didn't have to walk so darn far to get up to the microphone. This is not a long report. We uh, did send it in the uh, electronic method. It was late getting in, but I'm hoping to get to you all. If, and if you didn't look on your computer now, because it's on there somewhere. Just want to uh, say we've been working on uh, getting our stuff all lot ready for the convention, especially getting some of our, con our photographers together. Because there's a lot of different events they go on down to that convention, and we don't always hear about all of them until, oh, they're going to have that at 10 o'clock, and it's already 8 o'clock, <laughs> and you've already got everybody committed to something else. Please keep us aware of what's going on. If you've got something special, just let us know a little bit ahead of time so we can try to make sure we get somebody to cover it. That's part of the, of the convention, to be able to cover it with the pictures, because not everybody can make it down to Ocean City. And yet we need to have a way to get back and show people what we do. And we don't just go down there to hit the court and bar and everything else. We do an awful lot of other stuff, too. And um, I would like to ask the chairpersons of each award to make sure that when you get that thing out and get it up on the stage and everybody's happy, make sure the people that have won are directed to come straight back to the area where we do the pictures. And this is right at the back of the hall, through the door, to go out into the hallway and turn left immediately and you're in the, in the room where we have our studio set up. And we get our pictures taken. And while you're there, make sure they're gonna, they know that they're gonna have to give us a little bit of information about who they are, what award they got. And we would really help us a lot to get the information out across the state if they can give us the name of the local newspaper that serves their area and their email address. That way we can send them a copy of their picture and we can have a place to send the information about their award to you. And hopefully the newspaper will run it. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but at least we can try. It's still not too late to get the uh, names in for many of the awards that we present. The uh, date for a lot of them is tax day uh, on April 15th. But some of the others, as, as Teresa said, some of her, their awards, the Fire Prevention Awards, April the 30th. There's even a couple of awards that the date, the entry date is May the 1st. I have looked at this, and I've been, I've been doing this now for several years, and most of you all have been around this thing. You know that every fire department in this state pretty much has some type of a banquet or an information night awards night where they give out a little awards to the people that did the real good stuff for the fire department every year. And we would really appreciate it. Just submit them into the fire, into the awards thing. There's, uh, there's what, close to 20 some awards that we give out that the state association and, uh, puts out there and invariably some of you will fit into some of that area. And the only reason I can see that some departments don't do it either they're, they're apathetic or they're too lazy or they're jealous they don't want to they don't want to nominate somebody else for an award because they're there I, mean, they, I hate their life I'm giving you, you know the same old stuff bottom line is simply hey if you can recognize somebody for doing something do it we keep talking about retention 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 and yet one of the best ways to keep your people retain that member and keep their interest up is to acknowledge the fact that we recognize they're doing good stuff for the department. This doesn't cost you anything to send somebody's name in and they may win an award. At worst, they may get a little certificate, a little plaque, a little paper that says, hey, we thank you for what you did and we recognize that you did a good job for us. It's a way that we can get our people to continue to keep coming out and doing those nasty things in the middle of the night and all weekend and every night and during the week to help keep our fire departments operating. And as, as a member of the committees, the Public Relations Committee, if you have trouble with it, give us any of us a call. And we'll be glad to help you get things written up real quick. But still, don't, don't wait till the night before the awards do to be put in. Please let us know, and we'll be glad to try to help you with the thing. You don't have to be an English major or a great writer to write the report. All you got to do is just write down what they did. 
and, and we're happy to work with that from there. One more thing, been seeing an awful lot of the uh, departments, a lot more departments using the social media outlets to let everybody know about what's coming up. Now, you and I know that money and raising is a hard job and we do an awful lot of that. And it's real nice to be able to see that, hey, this department's gonna have a bingo, this department's gonna have a, bing a, a dinner, this is gonna do some type of an event. And it's neat that people get to find out what's going on in the local community, the people on the, on the uh, medias get to know. And a lot of the firemen throughout the state like to go to some of the other fire stations and, and go to those dinners and bingos and everything else. One thing I have noticed we're kind of lax in are the, the great, great graphics and wonderful information about what's coming up. Don't have an address in there. Sometimes they don't even have the date in there. Just know who's going to have it. And uh, you can't get anybody out if, you, if they don't know where you're at. Remember to put all the details in. If you got again, if you got any questions on what you're putting out there or want any more help, we'll be glad to help you. Lastly, thank you. Thank you very much to President Smothers, Vice President Carey and Simpson for the work they have done this year. I know that a lot of miles traveled, a lot of meetings set through, <laughs> and then sometimes that, that's that's harder than, than real hard work. You got to deal with people that that are not necessarily pushing for the fire department, and they do their best to keep keep the fire, keep them on the straight line, honoring our guys and working to try to keep our system one of the best in the nation. And as I can I can say, from having been around other places and seeing what others do, I am so damn glad I'm a part of the Maryland Fire Service because we are one of the best in the country. Thank you for letting us serve you. And if anybody has anything that you need from us, please give me a call. Does anyone have any questions for the Public Relations Committee? Any questions for the committee? Very good. Thank you, Ronnie. Yeah, you're welcome. Just letting you know, I have not been having any relations with any of the public. <laughs> Is that the well, tell the attorney. <laughs> please. Thank Jonathan you very much. And, uh, on deck. Jonathan will be John Denver. Mr. Chairman, just to, ahead, while sir. those guys are coming up, just to make a note, Frank's report is in, oh, it's filed electronically. Um, he's on a cruise. So Frank's report is there, and he basically, under history and archives, doesn't have anything new or earth-shattering to report, but he is on a cruise. Good morning, committee. Um, one thing I always say is that, you know, we're always looking for new content for the volunteer trumpet, and since uh, we uh, rarely get good content, we're going to take some today. So smile so Steve can get a picture of the committee. Perfect. Awesome. Um, we've uh, not met formally as a committee. Um, we do communicate via email and solicit information and articles, and so thank you again for everyone that does send that in. Uh, we have uh, recently reduced our distribution slightly. Um, it will not impact uh, departments whatsoever. Um, it, we just reduced the amount that's going out to each department and then ultimately um, some duplicate uh, addresses. So we've uh, trimmed our distribution from about 1,400 down to about 1,100, um, which will significantly reduce our printing costs. Um, the trumpets seem to be getting a little bit longer in length, um, so that will save us a significant amount of money. Um, again, I want to thank Stephen for you know, all the work that he does with the design of the trumpet. A um, couple deadlines. Uh, May 1st, 2024 will be the next deadline, um, and that will be our pre-convention edition. Um, so that will reach mailboxes prior to convention in Ocean City. Um, Hopefully. Uh, in the past, uh, last edition, it's usually been about a three to four week turnaround time. Uh, last edition was about five to six weeks turnaround time. Um, so it's taken them a significantly longer time to get things printed and out into the mailboxes. The unfortunate thing with that is that some of the content is no longer really fresh and new uh, when you get it a month and a half later. Um, so I'm going to work with them to see if there's a way we can kind of expedite that process just slightly so that it's in your mailboxes um, in a little bit uh, more timely fashion. 
Other than that, always looking like for new information, pictures, photographs, articles. If you do send them to me, please, um, with pictures, um, send the highest quality photo as possible. And other than that, uh, happy to answer any questions. When we get in, when we put stuff into the trumpet, we make sure that what if it's an advertisement or an event or whatever that is, that it will reach, hopefully reach the mailbox prior to uh, that event. Um, we don't send out any drafts to anyone. Um, once it's printed, then it's published online and then it's also published on social media. That answers your question, Mark. We can we can we can put it on um, the website and on social media whenever, and we can put it on there immediately. That's 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 fine. The only thing that we've felt could be a challenge is there's some competitions that we put in, in in the trumpet. Find different things, search this, email us. If we do that, it doesn't allow the folks that read it with a hard copy an opportunity to necessarily participate. Um, we can adjust that slightly to get it on social media and in, in the website quicker um, for folks that want to view it um, electronically. We could definitely adjust that to make that happen. No. No, I wholeheartedly agree. I also have extra copies. If anyone wants a copy, I'll be sitting in the back. So um, I have plenty of them with me today. So if you want an extra copy, feel free to grab me. I did notice, Jonathan, that neither of this year's copies are on the website yet. So What's that, Chip? The 2020, no, nothing in 2024 is on the website yet. At least that's the best we can. Let's adjust it now. Okay. They should be. Um, so we'll make sure that we'll okay. take a look and, and that they get up there for you. Thanks, Chip. Any other questions? Thank you. And benefits will be next. Uh, and John, you'll be a part of that too. So you keep going. Good morning. The uh, marketing events uh, committee, the last uh, event that we uh, participated in was the Ocean City Hotel, Motel, Restaurant Association Trade Expo. If, if you haven't been there for that, they fill that building uh, with vendors. Now, those vendors are mostly potential exhibitors at our convention. So there's a couple of reasons we, we go down to that one is to support the Hotel Motel Association, but secondly, is to have access to all those vendors and, and hopefully pick up additional exhibitors for the convention. And I'd like to thank uh, Kate and uh, Lynn, as well as uh, Joel McCray and, and Barbara McCray. They, they worked those vendors. They, they, they saw an awful lot of them and uh, had discussions with them and I understand we have uh, pretty good leads and, and hopes for uh, additional vendors. So that, that's time well spent. Uh, the next event that we have will be the uh, Maryland Emergency Managers Association uh, Symposium. That'll be in the uh, end of May. The EMS Care at the Beach was canceled, so we won't be there. And the Maryland Municipal League is the week after the convention this year. Any, any questions on the marketing events? Uh, short answer, no. Uh, actually, we aren't really a lot of marketing uh, materials we put out. I mean, we uh, for the uh, Hotel Motel Net Association, Kate had done a, a nice postcard that had information on the convention, and, and we certainly post those out, but that is something that we... Uh, we'd at least put as, as a tagline or something on our thing so people do know that we, we do have that nonprofit status. That, that's a good idea. What, uh, what while, Mark, I was going to say, John, one, uh, what Mark is talking, at our fire department, we actually have on every piece of stationery or letterhead, we actually have it on it. 
So every time, everything we send out, we have, regardless of what it is, that we're a 501c3 under those and what, you know, what the benefits are. So, and like it, so we just we just have it right on our stationery as well. It, it's it's easily done, and, and if it if it helps at all, it's it's worth the, the uh, effort. Any other questions? Would would you like me to do the reaching the next generation while I'm here? Do you? Okay. The reaching the next generation. Uh, we're, we're continuing to work on a number of things. First of all, we're looking forward to uh, awarding the first next generation leadership award at the convention this year, Orioles. Uh, besides uh, besides that, we're working on the web page redesign, the working with elected officials documents, undergoing final corrections, and the why should I be involved in the MSA information continues to be developed. Orioles. So uh, the, um, the the next thing, though, if, if you saw the report, which both these were uh, filed electronically, we'd like to uh, recommend that the association establish an additional committee to be called the Next Generation Leadership Advisory Committee. And the idea is to have young leaders involved in, in the association and, and advising the next generation, uh, reaching the next generation committee, the executive committee and leadership on issues and, and their point of view. Basically what it would be doing would be involving the next generation in reaching the next generation. Uh, the, the reasons why, well, it, it's their future. They do have a different point of view, a different background. And we hope with their input on things, we might be better to ad address issues that are important to our next generation. So uh, the next part of that report was actually kind of the details on how the uh, committee would be set up, how people would be uh, on it, and how they would serve and such. Uh, this started with a actually the discussion between Jonathan and myself and, and I'll tell you a lot of the details uh, f that you see there uh, were, were provided by John or uh, Jonathan or actually added by Jonathan so uh, I, I know that's kind of a, a large step to recommend so I would guess you would have some questions is there anything that we can help and I, and I asked Jonathan if he would be here again on this part of it to uh, to assist this as well. Did, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, I, I, well, I say no, but then I start talking. Um, I, I, we've, we've tried to address, you know, next generation um, challenges within the MSFA for a while now. Obviously, if you look on the room yesterday and today, we really haven't been successful. I know that at one point we also tried to have executive committee members bring someone new to the table to a meeting, and obviously that really hasn't been successful. Um, this is just another attempt. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be a solution to our challenges and our issues and our problems of bringing younger folks into the work of the MSFA, but we do feel that not doing nothing is, is not valuable to us. And we need to try something. Uh, ultimately, we think that the, the committee itself could do more than just advise. Um, it also gives them an opportunity to uh, do some service learning hours. It also gives them an opportunity, um, maybe potentially develop it into an internship program, to give them something out of it. Obviously, younger folks are motivated usually by financial gains of money, but this is another opportunity for, other than financial, to give them something tangible for their time. Um, using some of the younger folks potentially, not only in advisory positions, but use them to help with marketing, social media, other opportunities that we have to offer to them. Um, for their time to give back to the association. So happy to answer any questions. Um, when John brought the idea to me, I, I did, I love the idea. A lot of those details in that uh, potential report now were um, my comments and what my thoughts initially were, but happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Are you looking at uh, that nine membership I was looking at? Is that looking to kind of parallel Geographically, the state. I mean, you could have, or you, you could have five members from one county and the rest scattered. Or what's? What well, considering it wouldn't be, in my opinion, considering it wouldn't be a, a voting position, um, they wouldn't have any 
merit as far as voting on any potential actions that were taking place, and it's strictly advisory. In my opinion, is that we accept anyone that would want to participate. Obviously, if we end up getting a huge participation, we could potentially develop more of an applicational process so that we can screen out candidates um, and make it more representative of the entire state. But we know with programs that involve younger folks getting involved, the participation is usually lower to begin with. Um, so I would say that we can adjust it as necessary to fit um, potential folks that would be interested in, in, in working with and advising the leadership. And this also just gives them a direct line to the presidents, obviously the executive committee as well, um, and advising them on challenges, class challenges, training challenges, departmental challenges, onboarding recruitment or retention challenges, just gives another input, another set of eyes um, and voices that um, sometimes we don't often hear from. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mr. Just comment on that. Uh, I think it sounds like a good idea, the advisory committee. I, I like that. But um, I'm wondering if it would be more practical, more realistic to actually take this and make this a subcommittee of the next generation committee. Uh, this way we've got the same leadership and so on involved uh, from the top down and working with those individuals. Um, you you're kind of honing in on the same direction of where you want to go and what you want to do. Uh, you're probably going to have many of the same people involved anyway. Uh, so, um, you know, just it would, it would work more or less like we do with the EMS committee, having a BLS subcommittee, a uh, ALS subcommittee, and so on. Um, you know, I think I'd be in favor of what you're talking about, working as one rather than separate groups. That's my comment. I, I certainly uh, certainly can be set up that way. Actually, the hope would be that eventually that group would take over the reaching the next generation. So you don't have somebody my age trying to tell somebody that's 25 uh, how to do things, rather having them be involved uh, in that. So yes, I, I mean I. I I, I think it makes sense as, as a, especially starting out, you know, getting it going and then maybe kind of seeing how it works out. That, that might be a, a very reasonable it, way it to do It does sound very realistic, and I'm sure that the uh, first vice and I can work with you and talk about that and see where, where it can head. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, maybe we're going over too quickly, but the place to recruit is going to be the convention. And I don't know if we have enough time, Mr. President, to implement a, sub, a subcommittee through the committee. Is this rushing too much? And like I said, I, I, that's where we're going to get be able to meet people and maybe promote the idea, but I hate to delay it four years. So, Mr. President, what are your thoughts? Eric? I'm sorry. <laughs> Eric, President. I don't know if you hear my comments. This is the, the, to recruit for this idea, the best place to recruit is going to be Ocean City, but I'm not sure we have time to really do anything between now and Ocean City, but I want to get your thoughts rather than wait for the next administration to at least lay the groundwork and try to reach out to people now and then kind of logistically put it together after the first of the uh, first of the year. Uh, like I'm just trying to think out loud because I hate to wait a whole year to try to recruit when we got hundreds of people there. I think as long as the administration is good, I mean, obviously, marketing and recruitment flyers, things like that, and getting solicitation out there for folks to join. We can whip that up in 24 hours. Like that, that's, that's their problem. Um, I think we can have things prepared ahead of time for a convention as long as we have the blessing to move forward with establishing a subcommittee. I'm good. Yep, I'm good. I mean, I, I think the more that we can get out there and we're, and, and like I said yesterday, I, I think our recruitment efforts are working good. You know, once we bring people in to the service, we got to like them. Because I hear that when I go around the state. Well, I bring new people in and nobody talks to me. So for the old folks, and I'm one of you, you got to like your people when you bring them in and you got to talk to them. The second thing we have to do is that as they're going through their, if you're going to be operational, we got to help them get through the process of the red tape for MEMS and MIFRI and making sure that when they register, that they've got to do the work. And this got brought up yesterday. So if you're doing the EMT stuff, you 
going to be successful, you got to do the homework. You got to do the canvas, and that become and that's why I want to have a presidents and chiefs forum so that we can continue to echo that, which we hadn't gotten to this year. Uh, I know the vice presidents that's in their wheelhouse, uh, as well as with Kate. And maybe we might get that done by the end of the year, at least have one up and running. But we'll do the same thing and do regional. Um, but as we're getting our younger folks into the service, um, you know, we got to make it a little bit more palatable to them. And sometimes um, that might be even trying to get them back and forth to class because I hear that too. Sometimes it may be a little difficult. So we all have department vehicles. You know, I certainly give up my chief's buggy to my cadre of folks, and here's the keys go go to class. I'm not going to have them miss a class. Um, and some folks don't think about that. So it's the little the little nuances that maybe we didn't have weren't privy to coming coming up the ranks, but we've got to change. And the fire service has to have a willingness to change, and if we're asking younger folks, younger men and women to step up, whether it's for us or for the auxiliary, and I try to echo that too. Uh, if we want to be administrative only, you know, we need to echo that too. We've got room for you. I guarantee you there's not one department in the state that couldn't use an extra form body in it. So I'm willing to work with you, John, Jonathan, however you guys want to make it work. I like Charlie's idea of uh, the subcommittee, and I'm willing to put that in play. If you want to do that now, instead of waiting, um, we, we can do that. I think that's, we can begin working immediately. I would ask one question. The question is, do we have a succession plan for the Maryland State Fireman's Association? And I would say that we probably don't, unless someone can produce one and give it to me and tell me, here's the plan for the next 10 years of how we're going to operate when folks here age out and the people come in, we probably don't. My answer to that is I think that this is a good first step into that and beginning to begin our succession plan for the replacements of everyone sitting here, and some of the committee carriers that are aging out and wanting to give up some of their time and get some more time back into their day, and obviously other positions throughout the association. So I think this is a good step in that direction. Obviously, my, my last comment would be it's going to require everyone's assistance to recruit people that are younger to participate. Obviously, uh, John and I can only recruit so many folks, and we only know so many younger folks. And uh, we don't know everyone from your regions, and so uh, we do ask for your participation in, in assisting with that. So that's all that I have, Chip. And, and we do have a few uh, strategic planning documents over the years that we put together. I think, uh, like like <laughs> a lot of planning documents in our county is done in other counties. Uh, they they get made, they get kind of put on the shelf, and they really don't hammer forward. So I think it's a good opportunity to take the dust off the plans and take a look at them, get your information together, get it to you, so we can all work together. Mr. Chairman, and you're right. And we have the uh, mentorship program that we've rolled out. You know, I'm not sure a lot of folks have taken that up that uh, Memphis are able able to teach. So we we've rolled that stuff out, and you know, people's just got to ask for it. So you know, and, and you're right. And Jonathan, you're you're hitting the nail on the head. And as I'm talking to the vice presidents over here, and even executive board members, who are the people that are coming behind you? Whether you're a committee chair or sitting on the on the committee, uh, you know, just like I was talking to Chris, this is a lot of technology up here on this floor. <laughs> but when these two goes go away, who's going to operate it? We're spending a lot of money in here, but who's going to operate it? So we need to start looking who's coming behind us, and that's got to be our mindset too. Younger or older, who's coming behind? Mr. Chairman. The, the age group that you're trying to hit, do we see them upstairs in the convention center? Do we see them downstairs at the vendors? Or do we see them just at the training? So what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is we need to hit all three of those areas to do what you're doing, I think. And it's, it's somehow in the classrooms, with working with Kate with the, the, the programs that we have. If that's where the... If that's where these 16 to 30 year olds are for that week we need to try to to reach out to them there they're not if they're not going to come upstairs to that meeting they're not going to know if they're not going to come into the vendors if that's where we're going to do it they're not going to know so we need to hit every part of our activities that week to 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 get this group and 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 maybe it's 
different stuff out through social media that week. I don't know. But I think, I think this is an excellent idea. And I think putting it underneath the next generation as a subcommittee with working those together with recruitment and retention, that's the people that we need to tell us how to do it, at least the recruitment part. And I, I applaud both of you for, for this here. I mean, there's a lot of detail and stuff went into that. But we just need to, we need to look outside the box of hoping these kids are going to come upstairs and that's where it's at. If they're not, then we need to figure out how to reach them those three or four days in Ocean City. That, that was my thought, that, that we need to identify young leaders, we need to recognize them, we need to encourage them, and we need to help prepare them. So uh, there are a number of, of things that we need to do with this, uh, but it's going to start out with bringing some together, identifying them. Uh, just sending stuff out on uh, social media that casts a wide net, but I think that we're going to need to do more in the best way of encouraging and, and nurturing our, our young and tomorrow's leaders. Well, I think one thing, just about everybody in this room is going to be in Ocean City. And not everybody is going to be have a younger member from their company, but you probably know somebody, or if you do have a younger member, there's nothing better than one-on-one -on -one personal contact to get things done. So let's all take as a responsibility when we're in Ocean City, I mean, we've asked everybody to bring one person here, and that's not working too good. So while we're in Ocean City, let's, let's work the crowd a little bit. Let's work together, work the crowd, and try to promote this and make it happen. Very good. Anything else for the committee? I have one comment. Go ahead. Um, it, maybe not this year, but maybe next year, under the uh, leadership of uh, President Kerry, and follow up with Charlie, that this organization or this group or maybe a subgroup consider not only the younger generation but the older generation that is retiring, living longer. I certainly would love to have a retired attorney as a member of my department to review contracts. I would love to have a retired banker investment person to tell me where I can put my money and make it grow and improve. And that's why, uh, again, AARP, uh, uh, senior centers, which I go to now because I'm at that age. But again, I think there's an opportunity there. Everything that Jonathan and, and John have been doing is, is great, and I, I commend them. And we certainly need the younger people to come into this organization and, and volunteer in Maryland for us to be able to continue to provide service. But I think there's an opportunity also that we should look at the seniors that, again, they're retiring, they're living longer, and they're looking for things to do, activities to do. Even if it's like just come out and help at the annual carnival or a breakfast or something. But again, maybe next year we can look at either expanding this committee or, or looking at a committee, again, that we can start looking at the older age group and again, bring them in and get them to support us in a fundraising activity or administrative activity uh, because, again, those seats aren't being filled either. Uh, or we have individuals that have been a treasurer of a fire company for 27 years, but again, we don't have anybody coming in behind them. And certainly, uh, a gentleman Jonathan's age isn't going to be interested in that, but a person my age would be interested in coming in and, and helping out uh, administratively. Very good. Any other comments? Thank you all. Thank you. Very Thank you. Great, uh, great program, great ideas, and we greatly appreciate it. Thank you for Thank your you. hard work. Okay, let's see. Dave Lewis, Dave is still out here. We're okay there. Anybody from the center program, LOSAP? I know Rick's not here. Any information? Wills for Heroes. Uh, Mike Farlow spoke to those yesterday, so um, I'm glad to see that continues to work. And that is online. Health and Wellness Committee, Teresa. Anything else? She's, she's healthy. We're well. Okay. Mr. Chair, do you want the foreign officer? Absolutely. I'm sorry. I thought that was all part of it. Go right ahead. No. Thanks. I'll make, I'll make it brief. Um, SAFER is continuing to operate. Uh, as you can see, in the, there's some recruitment retention officer courses being offered across different regions. 
Uh, so I want to tell Kate, thank you for arranging those. I will say that we need more participation, and I can continue to belabor the point that we need more people to participate. Uh, Allegheny is the next uh, R&R officer course um, this coming weekend, um, and participation is low. Uh, the course instructors reached out to me uh, last week asking for us to solicit it here in Allegheny, Garrett County, and we have. The unfortunate thing is folks do not want to take advantage. But the number one complaint that I hear is that we need more members of our departments. And so the president is absolutely right. We can lead a dog to water, lead a horse to water. We can't make necessarily drink, right? So it, again, leans on not only my shoulders, but also your shoulders as well. So if you have departments that are struggling with recruitment or intention, so please reach out to them and show them the information and make sure that they have the registration information for these courses. Um, additionally, uh, gearing up for convention, obviously, uh, going to try to arrange some activities there like we did last year. The committee recently met. Obviously, in April is National Volunteer Week. Um, I talked to one of my co-chairs, Joyce Fry, uh, Shry, the other day, um, and she wants to do some things geared towards retention uh, this year, but also um, do some social media toolkit ideas um, to give departments more of a templated uh, social media um, campaign type of feel for National Volunteer Week. So that's forthcoming and underway. Also, there are some cadet and some social media guides and things that are being updated. I did pass out a couple of those to you yesterday, um, just after our closing of our meeting. Um, so if you have any questions of uh, what's in those guides, I encourage you to let me know immediately uh, within the next week so we can adjust and edit those. Um, I've done a review of them. Uh, Kate's done a review of them. Two of the committee members have done a review. Um, I really like the design that we're going with, and obviously those guides will be put up on our new website, which is currently underway. Additional links on the website that's being developed is also um, underway and being updated at this time. Um, and as we have more information to distribute to the committee, we most certainly will do so. With that, I'll keep it brief, and if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Further questions for Jonathan? Again, thank you for your hard work. Lynn, anything further on scholarship? Susan, Susan very good. Good morning, everyone, and my name is Susan Mott, and I am here on behalf of Chairman Lynn Hawkins and the MSFA Scholarship Committee. The Scholarship Committee is working hard to continue to update our website to include the new scholarship funding. Uh, donations can be made uh, on a one-time or set-up or yearly basis for scholarships on the individual or department scholarship that we set up last year. Funds are added to the MSFA Continuing Education Fund to be awarded to the number of applicants each year. The donation levels at this time are Chief, $1,000, Deputy Chief, $750, Captain, 500, Lieutenant, 250. Acknowledgement of donors and their honorees will be made in the annual convention book and must be submitted no later than April the 30th. Please let the committee know if you are aware of a corporation or organization or individual with scholarships for first responders that they would like to present to the committee for review. Uh, I do have a gentleman here that would like to speak. Good morning. You just have to get close. No, no it's not. It's now on. Go. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I am going to donate in uh, memory of my father a $250 uh, donation towards the scholarship committee. And I'm happy to be the first one to do that and hopefully People will follow behind, and this will build so that we can give additional scholarships to all the young people that are supporting our volunteer fire companies, and hopefully that, that's what we'll have. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, could you bring your name and also your father, Josh? My father's name is John A. Corsoniti, and he was uh, past vice president and chairman of the board and life member of Chestnut Ridge Volunteer Fire Company. And I am Frank J. Corsney II. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. We also want to remind everyone to reach out to your 
to your stations, your departments, to whomever, that these scholarships are available. They're not being pursued by the young people, which is very frustrating. It's, our process is so easy uh, compared to what some of the scholarships that these young people are applying for when they're going to schools. So it's really important to let them know it's a simple process and that we have uh, several uh, different levels of scholarships available to these young people so that we can encourage them to come in. Because as we all know, recruitment and retention is very difficult these days, and young people are the, the, the future of this department. Uh, we do have committee meetings scheduled, and May 14th is a full committee meeting in person. Uh, the awards will be announced on June the 1st, and we will be presenting those awards on June 18th at the annual convention. Any questions for the committee? Just one. I assume from the last meeting that the additional funds that came into us have been rolled over to the account that we mentioned. The, the administration of those funds? They will be. Okay. Just, just checking that we're following through on the, the actual additional funds that came in. Yeah, anytime we have a donation dedicated to a specific cause, we do that. Um, probably cancer is one of the biggest ones that everything that comes in goes into the cancer uh, count and all. We do that. I mean, the administration of it, we, were going to look, we looked at the community foundation where it came from. We were putting it back into the person that administered those funds. Is that what we're doing? Did we follow through on that? The funds that came from the foundation in Baltimore, we were looking at how they were going to be what, how they were going to be reinvested and maintained. I just want to make sure that we follow through on that. We'll yes. get with, we'll get with the treasurer. Okay, well I'm looking over there. Okay, thank you, Kate. Okay, just want to make sure again, just making sure the, that we proceeded where we were going. Thank you. Any other questions for the committee? Thank you very much for everything. It's a wonderful program, Mr. Frank. Thank you very much. That's a, a fantastic beginning opportunity to increase our scholarship fund. Thank you so very much for your calls. Yep. Oh, oh. You already answered the question. I mean, the, the funds we're, we're looking at reinvesting so that it goes, it goes into perpetuity. So, you know, if somebody has a specific name, Frank, thank you very much for your donation. And I, I'm sure we'll get more to follow with that. So thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Any thank you, Mr. Chair. Scholarship? Any other committees or reports that have not been presented over the last two days? Any other committees or reports I may have missed? Hearing none. Move to old business. Do we have any action items to take advantage of this afternoon or this morning? Are there any action items left over from previous meetings? Hearing none. Oh, I'm sorry, Kate, go ahead. Just a follow-up um, from uh, Mark's comment earlier. So I did forward all of you the updated letterhead that has either without the logo or with the logo, or you can put your contact information on there that has the 501c3 notation on it. So that's the updated letterhead that we've been using. So if you want to update your own letterhead, you have it in your inbox. Thank you, Kate. Great. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Steve. And this may have been old business, and it's my fault for not catching it sooner. Um, Teresa, if you don't mind coming up a minute, we were talking, and uh, last evening she made the comment about the voting in Ocean City and a concern with computers. And we res I thought we resolved that last year, that we would have ample computers for all the activities that convention and that if we needed to purchase more or rent more we would do so and uh, I think we need to make sure that we we put this to rest so that this year we don't have any snafus um, I know Snader had secured us the 10 computers but our we only had five downstairs because they kept the rest upstairs for the other voting so we really do need the 10 down with the auxiliary um, we were delayed, and um, that's uh, we we definitely need the number that we asked for. So we got uh, Richard Sand 
we, we ordered 40. So you're getting 10 and there's gonna be 30 upstairs. Mm -hmm. So, and we've also, as we went down to look at the convention layout, we're gonna expand where the initial voting is. So mm -hmm. when folks come in, you're not gonna have that backlog in the back hall again. So we're not doing that anymore. So we're done with that. So it's gonna be at the top of the stairs where we were last year for voting. It's all gonna be electronic again this year. People like it, we're gonna talk to our folks, make sure that the when you log into it, all that stuff's gonna work so we don't have the hiccups. So it's a work in progress. So we're gonna stay with electronic. We're not doing paper, we're staying with electronic. So if you got a got an issue with that, you're gonna to have to get over it because that's where we're that's where we're at now. Um, the ladies will have 10 computers downstairs, so if there's something that we're missing, that I'm missing, or we're missing, let us know now so that we can get that taken care of. Okay, so and also... They got we, their TV last year, so we're yeah. good with that. So We have to ensure that registration stays open, especially on Sunday for people coming down. They cannot close at 12 o'clock and not come back. I had 32 people last year waiting at 12 o'clock to register, and a lot of people did not come back because the registration committee had closed. I'm like, we just bought you a television set. What is the excuse? And they said, well, they're at lunch. I said, we all stagger lunch. And I know they're not here to defend it, but I can tell you, when you have 32 people standing outside of that wall waiting to register and they're not there, that right there made a lot of people upset, and they said, you know what, we're not coming back. What time do you want me to close it? I feel it should stay open each day up until about 3 o'clock. Okay, we'll make it happen. Because that right there, I mean, I'm getting the phone calls because people are asking me because it was a name change thing. He goes, you want me to vote for this name change? Guess what, I'm not coming back now. We're, we're in the planning stages. We'll, they'll, we'll figure it out where they've got to either do it at, at a shift and it'll stay open until 3, so done deal. What else you got? <laughs> Is everybody ready for the solar eclipse? <laughs> <laughs> it's moving. No, I, I mean uh, we'll 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 stay up at three. We'll make the they'll we'll make the adjustments, and that, that that's fair. That's fair because some folks get into the Ocean City a little bit late, or traffic, or you get behind something, and who knows what's going to happen with the bridge and stuff. So, um, so we'll make the adjustments. You will have your 10 computers. We'll have 30 upstairs, 10 downstairs. Richard's already um, got that uh, in, in motion, so I think we're good. So with each iteration, we're getting a little bit better. So, um, and it doesn't doesn't take as long as long as folks know how to get in, be shown what, how how to make arrangements. I think the Madam President. Um, when we were in Ocean City, she figured out what your layout was layout. going to be. You know exactly so, so, I mean, if anybody wants any additional changes, let us let me know now. So, but so we're good. So we're open until three. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, another item that's under new business. Um, there's been request to institute a new award, a Chief Chaplain Emeritus. Harvey Dixon Chaplain of the Year Award. I uh, have the uh, information presented uh, to implement this award. Uh, Chief Chaplain John, were you looking to this to be implemented this year because the cutoff is like next week or to, and, and for next year, I'd like to come up and the, discuss this presentation. I don't know if everybody's got a copy of that. We'll make copies available. Um, Chip uh, or John, if you want to read what, what it actually is. Um, but I was approached about recognizing our chaplains for the good hard work that they do around, around the state. Um, and I think the, the recognition is, um, to me, very profound and I think the men and women in our chaplaincy need to be recognized. So I've asked our chaplains to come up with a criteria uh, for the award, and they've done an excellent job, but really this has just come up in the last couple of weeks, and here we are. But I think it's a 
very much worthwhile for us to recognize what our men and women do for us in our time of need, uh, not only in death, but our mental health. They're available to help us there. Uh, and when you call them up, they're right there, and they answer any questions that we have, provide any spiritual guidance if you need it, um, and do a heck of a job for us for this association. So I'll let you or John or well, I'm, I'm going to let Harry speak because it was his project. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, and I don't have a copy of the project, but that's all right. Um, thank you. Good morning. Uh, the president asked me to put the award together, and I observed to the president that chaplains are different. We get our rewards in heaven. And he says, I'd still like to do the award anyway. So that's where, we, where things started out. And uh, I might need that one day where I'm going. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, we started through, and I couldn't think of a better way to start out the awards as I look back through the rest of the awards, and they're all typically dedicated to somebody. And so who better to dedicate it to than Harvey? And so I, I tried to put together just briefly, you know, some of the things that Harvey's done for chaplains and reaching through chaplains to serve those who serve others. So that's basically what I did as far as the, the criteria goes uh, and putting it together. Uh, it's designed to be for somebody um, that serves as a chaplain in the department. And I, I would make this exception in a lot of people's mind. Um, the department chaplain has to be a member. There are a lot of pastors out there that serve churches, that serve fire departments. I know we've got a pastor in Beltsville that if I've got a crisis in Beltsville, I can call him and say, hey, I need to have you talk to one of our members, and he'll gladly do it. But yet he is not an official chaplain of the fire department. So it's written broad enough, I believe, to accommodate that, but at the, still, at the same time, it's for, intended for somebody that ministered to the fire service or the ladies' auxiliary, for that matter. Um, but, you know, the fire service is a family. And... Uh, tries to support and encourage and build and do the things that we need to do spiritually and emotionally um, to continue to do our job. So that's, that's kind of you know, my summary of what it is and Mr. how I put it together. Mr. Chairman. Yep. You can tell it's heartfelt is the way he set it up. So I make a motion we go with it, let them have their uh, award, and if they need to take an extra week this year to get whatever they need to get, to go ahead and do it. Um, but I think it's a worthwhile cause, and I do appreciate it, and I, I thank you for putting that together. So I thank make you. that a motion. Yeah, we have a, well, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second by Randy. Okay, discussion. his comments. I agree with that. Thank you, Randy. Okay. Motion and seconded to proceed with the award to present to the Dixon family this year on behalf of Reverend Dixon and that the award would be in his name and presented the following year. As, that is the motion. Correct. Okay. Further discussion? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I think you're sidestepping a couple things. One, this needs to come to the awards committee first. 
before it's approved, as outlined in the bylaws or the award section. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it, but I think it needs some uh, additional work on it. Okay, stand by. Stand by, we're checking the bylaws with respect to the process. And just for everybody's edification, I had talked to Dole and gave him the information, and he had been working with me on it, so he's aware that this is coming. This is not a big surprise to him. It's just processes, whatever the process is. Okay, we're trying to find the exact information with respect to one of the awards committee. Didn't see that. However, let me make a suggestion to the, the motion and the amenders, uh, the amendment or the seconder, wherever it is, that we do the presentation recognition of Reverend Dixon this year at the family with the intention of implementing the award under the next administration for next year in his name. That. In other words, we're still going to do, we're going to recognize Chief Dixon, Chief Harvey Dixon, Chief Chaplin. We will recognize him, bring the family up to present a recognition to him, and in his honor, we will be implementing this award next year. See what I'm saying? In other words, we, we will handle that, that, we will actually recognize it. That'll Instead of actually trying to get the board done in two months, we will do the recognition recognize the family, and in his honor, we will be implementing an award in his name next year, and then that gives us time enough to do the logistics, get the plaques, what we're going to do, and under Skip, administration, if yeah, I think it's, it, the first that. award would be, uh, would be under Skip, but the I, first I award, think the, the first logistics give us a little skip. time to work out. Yeah. I think that's what Duel is saying, and, yeah. and, 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 and I understand what he's saying. Yeah, that'll, that'll so, but we can, you know, and like I say, it's my apologies for not having this out to you sooner, but we just I just got this. But I think what Harvey has done for oh, I 100% agree. Uh, with you your know, yep. uh, I mean, I don't think you're going to change many details in what he put out there. And, so, uh, and as you can uh, Bill, tell, you understand what we're saying. In other words, we will go ahead and do everything. Are you okay with that under the motion, Randy? You okay on the second? Very good. Okay. So the motion is to implement the award. In the following year and for this year, we will honor Reverend Harvey Dixon and his family at the convention so that the, uh, and advise them and present to the convention. The award will be presented at the next, and that will give us plenty of time to set up logistics, go over bylaws, or how we're going to set the regulations, what's the award going to look like, you know, everything. So, is that, does that meet the Thank intent? You. Bill? Randy said okay. Okay. The motion is that we will proceed with the board for next year, and we will honor Reverend Dixon at this year's convention. All in favor, signal saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. 
Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. Somebody be kind enough just to put, uh, tell Steve it looks like the 11 o'clock is probably going to be pretty close for lunch. Head back here. Any other new business to come before the assembly? Any other new business to come before the assembly? Anything for the good of the order? Anything else for the good of the order? Chief Chaplain John. I'm speaking as president of a fire company right now. Um, we've been hacked a second time on a checking account, and when I called the insurance company, uh, evidently it's going rampant across the state of Maryland because he's had six other companies contact him about their checking accounts being hacked. So we've decided we've moved over to strictly paying all of our bills with credit cards, not mailing checks through the mail anymore, because they're not actually taking the checks and washing them, like the bank told us they're doing a lot of washing the checks now. They're actually creating a check on the on the computer and using the same dollar amount that our check was used for. So it would be processed to the bank and the treasurer wouldn't pay attention because the treasurer knew that he wrote a check for $4,835. So he would just process it as the bill was paid. And then 30 days later, you find out that you're overdue because you didn't make a payment. Well, you cashed our check. Well, no, we no, we never received it. So, so just everybody keep an eye out on their checking accounts because it's happening two times for us in six months. That and computer fraud and everything else, just, it's a different society, John. I'll tell you, it's nuts. Yeah. You've got to really watch yourself. Thank you very much. I hadn't heard that one, so thank you. That's a new one. Anything else for the good of the order? Anything else for the good of the order? Hearing none, we will go to executive committee member reports. Mr. Block. Good morning. Uh, I want to thank uh, Grantsville Volunteer Fire Company for their hospitality this weekend. It's been great being here, nice facility. Food was wonderful. On behalf, on, on behalf of, of Victor Hes Henderson, the president of the Anne Arundel County Volunteer Firefighters Association, and all the officers and folks in Anne Arundel County, we bring your greetings to the Maryland State Firemen's Association and the executive committee. Um, we have the usual situations down here that everyone has with recruitment and retention, and we're working on it. And I look forward to seeing everyone in Ocean City. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Mr. Smith. Good day, everyone. I want to thank Grantsville Fire Department for their hospitality and hosting us this weekend. A great job. Also want to um, invite everybody down. The end of the end of this month will be our Fireman's Southern Maryland Volunteer Fireman's Association convention. Oh, convention weekend, the last weekend of the month, so having that and bring you greetings from Calvert Charles and St. Mary's from President Hassler. Um Also, since we won't be meeting, wanted to wish to all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. So, thank you. Thank you, Randy. Chief Phillips. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I bring greetings to everyone from Talbot, Dorchester counties, the middle of the eastern shore. Not the upper, not the lower. We are in the middle. Uh, President Starkey and Yaki from the uh, respective counties uh, send their best to everyone. Uh, everything at this time seems to be going as well as it can on the Eastern Shore in the, mid in the middle of budget requests and everything else. But um, I want to thank the Grantsville Volunteer Fire Company also. It's been a wonderful weekend up here. I uh, don't think I've been anywhere recently. We had all four seasons in one or two days, but anyhow, it's, it's wonderful. It's very nice. And I just say thank you to everyone. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Fowl. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, greetings from Kent and Queen Anne and Caroline counties. Uh, I, too, would like to thank Grace Grantsville for their hospitality this weekend and, this, and the service. And also, 
the uh, four seasons that we had. Um, I've been to uh, I've been to several of the different county association meetings. Um, my Kent and Queen Anne Association has dropped their meetings back to two times a year. So I've been hitting, I've been going to the Chiefs Association and the Fire and EMS Commissions of the, those prospective counties. Um, uh, Kent and Queen Anne will have their, their one meeting in the spring. And May 15th is their memorial service. It's at 7 o'clock and it's at Sullivan Fire Company. We're, host, we're hosting it. Um, Caroline County Volunteer Fire Association meeting is May 8th at 7 o'clock at the Denton Volunteer Fire Company. So those that are running for office or anything need to attend, they'll be there. Uh, Dave Lewis and all will be at the Caroline County one and uh, another gentleman, but I, could, I didn't get his name. Um, and I just recently went to the Kent County meeting. So again, that, thanks again and have a good trip home. Thank you, Bill. Mr. Dayton. Thank you all for coming to the Western Maryland. We tried to provide everything we could. Grantsville did a wonderful job with hosting. We provided the, the weather for you to welcome you to Western Maryland. Um, everything seems to be going good. Safe travels home this evening, or this afternoon, and we'll see you all in the ocean. Thank you, Tim. Past President Kurtz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to thank Grantsville for the hospitality uh, this weekend. Um, one of the things I do want to bring up that's near and dear is the health mental wellness. Uh, Harford County and those of you who know Sandy Gallion, President Level, who works in Harford County under mental health and wellness, they have a app that came out for all first responders. Um, it's called the Lighthouse Health and Wellness. And uh, it has different resources, personal wellness, mental health, physical fitness and health, sleep sound, financial, financial fitness, substance use and addiction, self-assessment, helpful resources. And then you can go on to the library and it has the different peers that you can contact. Uh, the Lighthouse Health and Wellness is a nationwide app available. I've already talked to Teresa and all, and maybe the MSFA can uh, come on board and we can have this app available for our membership. It, it's free to the membership, it was free. Uh, Sandy Gallion can get the prices is what Hartford County paid for, but that went through the government and our county executive, uh, Bob Cassily. But uh, it, it's a, a program for our people that they can go right onto the app. Uh, there's no records of who went on, who you contacted, that's all private under the HIPAA regulations, so thank you. On behalf of Harford Cecil, uh, bring you greetings from both Harford and Cecil counties. Uh, we want to thank Grantsville for the hospitality this weekend and the uh, Allegheny County Association for the hospitality Friday evening. Uh, we're also very pleased, as you heard, that our president from Harford Cecil Robbie is a candidate for second vice president, and uh, we hope that you will support him in the convention. And, and uh, as I said during my cam campaign, as I, I campaigned and my opponent was asking for support, I said, I don't want your support, I want your vote. And uh, certainly ask that you do so for our candidate. Um, the uh, counties, as you know your counties are in the budget period. Uh, it is refreshing to hear uh, that our county executives are working with us. Uh, Harford County's kind of holding a, a uh, zero increase, the budget line tight. Uh, it was 
really refreshing to hear the county executive in Cecil County supporting the companies and putting forth some some dollars to help their efforts at their last meeting. So uh, hopefully everyone else is working through that process too. Thank you. Hello from Montgomery County. We continue to um, work through some of our own concerns just like everybody else's, but we are uh, continuously staffing apparatus, buying apparatus, recruiting and retaining volunteers. We are actively working with our council members and continuously communicating. That's a key part of our success that we do talk to our council members because when it comes time for voting, when it comes time for support, they're the ones that have to pass the, uh, the programs or the funding. So it's very important we continue to talk to them. I want to thank Chip for your leadership, the president for their leadership, the auxiliary, and everybody that comes. Um, something that I want to mention is the um, key bridge. And one of the things that I noticed at every one of the press conferences was the partnership. The partnership. So this is just an example of what we saw uh, yesterday and today. Our continuous working with the partnership is going to make things successful. I'm very proud to be involved with this organization. I'm very proud to be a volunteer. So thank you for everybody in Grantsville. Thank you for this weekend. Good morning, everybody, and greetings from Prince George's County. I'd like to thank uh, Grantsville for everything they've done, all their hospitality, and all the work that everybody in this room does for this organization. As far as Prince George's County goes, uh, I know my uh, report last committee meeting was a little dire. Uh, the temperature's gone down, but only slightly. And it may be due to the impending political season coming up. However, we still are working through our problems. Uh, one of the big problems is recruitment, and re is not recruitment and retention, but getting people actually on the floor. It still takes, in Prince George's County, entirely too long. We're, we've been working on that. We continue to get the, the fire chief saying, we're working, we're working, we're working, but it doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. Uh, so at any rate, I guarantee you the internal temperature is still pretty high. But that having been said, um, I want to say we're still working through the uh, renovations from Station 31, uh, the Beltsville Station, as I mentioned last, uh, last meeting, and some of you saw on the news, uh, you know, the, the, the problems there. We're, we're, we've met once and we're going to meet again Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening again on that to monitor the, the, <clears throat> the updating uh, of what's going on. Um, we're working on our tribute. We are beginning to uh, accept names for that again. Uh, we haven't set a date for that as of yet. We're, we're still working on that. Our convention this year will be in September. It will be the, the uh, September the 22nd through the 28th. Um, it's a, a little later than it normally is, but that, that, uh, that was the time it will be at Akakeek. Uh, so as many of you know, Akakeek's pretty far down in Prince George's County. They're right next door to Charles County, as a matter of fact, but that's where the convention will be this, this year. Um, our Founders Circle, that was one of, the, uh, one of the problems we've been having with the fire chief attempting to take that over. Uh, it's in a draft form still <clears throat> as president. Uh, <clears throat> I instructed our chief chaplain to work on that as if we still have control of it. We'll see whether we do in the end or not. Uh, we've, we've run that thing for 25 years and all of a sudden now the chief wanted to take it over, but right now that's just a draft. So that will probably be coming up sometime in September. We haven't really set a date for that yet. And finally, Prince George's County has a fundraiser, uh, Krispy Kreme Donuts. Everybody likes Krispy Kreme, especially when the hot sign's on. Uh, you go online. Uh, I, think, I think we handed out flyers uh, yesterday at the, at the executive committee meeting. Go online. You, you, you purchase them online. They give you a code, and you can take it to a, a Krispy Kreme and 
we we get we get about I think the the donuts are fifteen dollars a dozen, and we get seven dollars a dozen for every every dozen we sell. So we're hoping to get a little bit of a, a little bit of money together. There are funds we sorely need for a number of things in Prince George's County that that we are lacking. So go on go online and buy those donuts, people. I've already bought a dozen, so and I'm sure that's probably not the last dozen that I'll buy, but. At any rate, I, I, once again, I'd like to thank everybody in this room that works for this association. It's, it's, we, need, we need to be more diverse, I, you know, I must say that, but the diversity is what's going to make us stronger. Thank you. Lee, you need to work through Eric about those donuts, because I'm sure he's got some connections that would love to get donuts, right? Yeah. <laughs> go, go online, you'll get a code. <laughs> Mr. Bilger. I think we should, uh, every activity we do, we should have Krispy Kreme donuts. Hello, I bring you greetings from Howard and Carroll County. Uh, I would like to echo the comments to Grantsville, Allegheny Garrett for the great hospitality, the beautiful weather we had, the opportunities to come together, socialize, interact, and learn from each other. I also want to congratulate President Smothers on a successful year. And I know under the leadership of Skip Carey and Charlie Simpson, we will have two more successful years and we'll continue to grow and improve this organization uh, as we have for many, many years. I bring you greetings from Terry Taylor. She is the new president of the Howard County Association. They are meeting now every other month. But she took over after the passing of Chief Mickey Day and she's doing very well and she's very interested in making sure her association interacts very positively with the MSFA. So I think it's going to be very good. With your permission, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to yield the rest of my time to President Sue Mott from Carroll County to provide an update on Carroll County. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mark, for yielding your time. I appreciate it. I bring you greetings from Carroll County. Uh, we are in the midst of a wonderful, tumultuous transition, and we are trying to stay very positive. And I want to thank MSFA for their support, uh, specifically your IT group that has helped us to put our, med our um, message out to our citizens who are a little confused during the transition. Somehow they um, are getting a lot of bad press. And uh, so we're trying to keep it very positive to make sure our citizens understand that the volunteers are here. We're not going anywhere. We're going to continue to provide services for fire and EMS, and that we are going to be there come whatever weather that is brought. Um, I also want to thank Allegheny and uh, Grantsville for allowing us to join them today for this meeting. And I look forward to continuing to help with this group. Thank you very much. The Honorable Chief Steger. <laughs> yeah. I like it too. Teresa fixed me up with a nice tie and some flowers this morning. <laughs> She said that uh, I was supposed to have a coat and tie on. Well, my coat and tie is still hanging in my garage where I set it, so waiting for Skip to pick me up, and I left it there. So that's why I'm like this. It's all the clothes I got. Okay. Oh, Skip already got me over there. So it will show up somewhere along the line, like President Cox said. President Cox said yesterday, when you take a picture, it will show up somewhere. So when you don't expect it, it will show up. So, you know, if you can dish it, if you can dish it out, you got to be able to take it back in. So that's all part of the team. Ooh. You just keep them in your memory bank. But anyway, I'd like to thank Grantsville for. Uh, hosting us this weekend. So they got a great facility here. And I know none of us in this room, maybe except for our chaplains over there, can do anything about the weather. So it is what it is. So uh, I'd just like to uh, welcome everybody to Ocean City for the convention and hope everybody has a safe time. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. A uh, couple things. First, welcome to Charlie, back as a uh, officer of the association, who's many, many years uh, of involvement on the executive committee, and he and I have been, uh, I think we'll be receiving our 50-year pin at Company 2 this year, and I got a couple years on him before that, so <laughs> uh, been good friends for many years, so welcome back, Charlie. And also welcome uh, my wingman today, new assistant secretary. And, uh, he jumped right in there. So Jonathan, you did a good, you did a good job with the understudy. You did a good job. Uh, first off, uh, certainly thank Grantsville. Uh, gave me a chance to reacquaint old friends. Uh, Steve was in communications many moons ago when I was involved in the uh, communications in Frederick. He was in Allegheny and Garrett County. So I hadn't seen him in years and years. And we got to share some stories again, maybe uh, Probably some of them we shouldn't even say here, but Steve, good to see you, and thank you for the hospitality. It was absolutely fantastic. Let's give him a hand. It's been great this week. <laughs> a couple things from Frederick County. We, uh, our county council this week passed a change in our low sap, so we will finally get reduced from age 65 that we've been for the last 42 years. We actually will go down to 62, so they have made some progress and increasing the uh, benefit level by $40 uh, per month. So making some progress, uh, it's been a little slow, but uh, you know, we were very appreciative of the council and actually the county executive had it in her budget. So we're appreciative of that. Uh, this year it fell on firefighters. Uh, it'll be the first weekend in May. They've changed it. That will be in Emmitsburg, which is in Frederick County. Uh, we actually will have three firefighters uh, being honored this year. Uh, one battalion chief who died of COVID during the uh, COVID crisis. We have a uh, volunteer chief who also was career in Montgomery County who uh, was declared line of duty for cancer. And a career firefighter in our county who actually was an assistant chief in Pennsylvania that died. Uh, there was two firefighters killed in the line of duty last year in uh, Tripoli, Pennsylvania. And he will be honored also. He's not from Frederick, but he was one of our career people who was off duty. So uh, keep those families in their prayers. Also, if you do go to the Fallen Firefighters and want to stop by the museum, it will be open. Glad to have you. We're open uh, we actually this weekend. Yesterday was our first day open for the season. And we do have some of the pictures from John Hoagland's collection displayed now uh, in the museum. And uh, with the thanks to the Junior Fire Company, we now have a display of the uniform of a junior defender who went to Harper's Ferry in uh, 1859. It's uh, one of the Zouave, very bright colored uniforms that the uh, Frederick uh, militia units wore. So it's kind of very unique. Uh, love to have you see it. So that's all from Frederick. Let's start with the presidents. Madam President, anything from the auxiliary? Good morning. Thank you to Grantsville for your hospitality and safe travels to everyone. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Second Vice President. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my thanks to uh, Grantsville for uh, an excellent uh, weekend here and both weather as well as a building. Hey, this is a nice facility. Great food. Special thanks to the Allegheny Garrett folks for their hospitality on Friday night. And for all of our attendants and you here, great. Really a pleasure to see everybody. And thank you for the work and the efforts that you put in to keeping this association going. Mr. Chairman, great meeting. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. First Vice President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That was not my uniform either, by the way. OK. To Grantsville, thank you. Beautiful facility, great hospitality, and I'm even beginning to like the mountains. I've been driving up here so much. <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's not seeing flat, though. It's weird. Uh, 72 days from the day, if I don't screw up, which there's a possibility that may occur, I'll have what I consider the greatest honor that could be bestowed on a firefighter in Maryland. I will follow in the footsteps of people around here that uh, 
It's even better than making a grab, and I was fortunate enough to make one of those in my career. The nice thing about it is that I said it last night at the uh, de-stressing de de -stressing we had in the lobby of the hotel. The two years I've spent as a president, and hopefully as a, vi as a vice president, hopefully next year as a president, uh, closest I've come to going back to the good times in high school. And, and that, that may sound kind of crazy, but it is. The friendship, the, the love of the service, and be quiet. <laughs> and <laughs> and, they, and they kidding and the comradeship, I mean, it's great. And when you look at the variety of ages, that's even greater. You know, this is, this is cool. This is one of the neatest things. And uh, to each and every one of you that have given up a weekend to come here because you have a deep concern for your brother and sister emergency service personnel in the state. That's what makes this organization what it is, and that's what will keep it going. Even though the young people don't understand us, experienced people. I won't use the word old, I'll use experience. And if you look around this room, there's a lot of experienced people here. <laughs> you know, and we have Lake Jonathan and his buddy. We've got a lot of young ones too. But don't forget why you're in this organization. And don't forget the organization. Show up, first off, send in your credentials. Show up in Rogers' bailiwick, in my bailiwick, and I would have dearly appreciate you voting for me, for the other gimp, and we got one healthy would be. He's big enough to carry both of us, too, you know, <laughs> through the next year. Show it up and vote for us. Thank you, Grantsville. It's been a blast. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Mr. President, closing words. Well, first of all, that was probably a one-room schoolhouse, and you had one friend. Is that what it was? Yeah. You know? Oh, I know, I know. But uh, we'll, we'll make sure he gets a wig for his, so he has some hair for his insulation. Don't ask him to wear his kilt that day. But, and, I, and I think he's still running for president, so I think we got that straight, right? All right, right? I, I, I don't know. It's, but, you know, so you can see the fun we have. So you know what kind of year uh, that, that's, that's coming. And that's great, and that's what the fire service is, and that's the camaraderie, and that's the brother and sisterhood that we have. You know, one person doesn't make this organization run. It's all of you, it's the executive board, it's the ladies auxiliary, uh, the men and women that are functioning in our committees, which is over 50 plus committees that we have in this organization. And we make the wheels on the bus continue to go round and round. And, and make it work. And as I've said, and you've heard all weekend, it's the partnerships of this organization that make us better across this state. Again, my message to the, our executive board members is when you go back to your home and to your associations, and folks ask you what MSFA does for you, just look at what the accomplishments that we've had in our legislative session. We have been more successful this year than we have in the past. That's not saying that anything that's happened with our past presidents, because certainly following Ben and Joel, they had uh, some tough years, especially during, during COVID. Um, this just happened to be a, good, a very good year for us, and we're gonna see the aftermath of that. But as Skip and Charlie, and Robbie, presumably with you, um, going forward, we still have a lot of work to do. And this organization can be that voice 
we're to 363 plus fire rescue and EMS services across the state. And I've heard that echoed numerous times in the halls of both the House and the Senate. How well this organization stands together, how we represent the volunteers across the state as in some of their career. And I have to give kudos to the IFF because they stood tall with us uh, this year uh, in, in Annapolis for our initiatives and vice, vice versa. We're making it better for all of our providers and healthcare clinicians in this state. You know, whether you're a career or volunteer, our initiatives or issues are the same. Whether you get paid for it or not, you know, our training's the same, or continuing education is the same. We're not that different, you know? And, and as a former state employee, I, I, I know the benefits of that. Uh, it's always good to get a paycheck, but, you know, as we do the R&R, &R, it backfills, continues to backfill for the career services in our in our state. And we still need that. And, I, and if you listen to the chiefs in the counties that are starting up um, combination services, they have a hard time trying to find career people to come to want to work for them too. So we're all in that same boat, but we're making inroads and then we're, we're blessed here in this state that our legislative body is supporting us. So that's a plus. It certainly, um, I want to ha have a recognition for a couple folks. First, I want to recognize Allegheny Garrett for uh, hosting our hospitality uh, house uh, at the uh, Elks Lodge this, this year. Uh, I was looking for a location. Uh, their association stepped up and said, uh, and I asked what, what I needed. They said, nope, we got it. Keep your hands off of it and let it run. And uh, I stayed out of it. So Jonathan, just the uh, recognition for your association and your membership and Thank you for me and the uh, presidents and MSFA for hosting us. I also want to say thank you to the members of the Grantsville Volunteer Fire Department for hosting us here in this lovely hall and taking the willingness um, to, to, to host us here. It's been great. Um, we have certainly seen the four seasons of Maryland. Uh, I know you didn't have any control, control of that, but uh, everybody will have a lovely ride home. I do have a certificate, but it's sitting on Doyle's desk. <laughs> Um, so I want to recognize, <coughs> I want to recognize you, you guys for that, and uh, I, I just had to do that with Doyle. He'll, he'll get me later. Um, but we do have a recognition for you. We also have a check, but our financial team had family issues this year, so I will be back to make some presentations at uh, one of your association meetings. And if your folks are back there in the kitchen, can we get them to come out for a minute? We got, we got one left. Okay, we got one. I want to say on behalf of MSFA, thank you very much. Thank you guys tremendously, and it was an honor and a pleasure to be able to, to be here. So uh, as a former trooper being out here, I know, I know what the uh, struggles are out here on this end. So as we're getting ready to move forward and keep the wheels on the bus, um, we certainly have um, our um, national recognition for our heroes as Chip had said, up in, up in Emmitsburg coming in a few weeks. Uh, we also have our Maryland Heroes Weekend uh, in Annapolis um, yet, to, um, yet to unfold. Hopefully we'll see you there. And as we're preparing to move into um, Ocean City for our annual convention, um, you really don't realize that here just in the tri-state area between Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania, our convention is still the largest one around. And these guys have seen it traveling around and some of the other past presidents. When you go to Pennsylvania and West Virginia, 
take a quarter of this room and that's their convention with their people, literally. You know, Delaware's probably the next largest uh, outside of us. So folks, I really mean it when, when we put stuff on our website, um, folks look at what Maryland's doing and they can't figure it out. And again, when I go out of state, I said, it's the partnerships that make us work. Um, and I told them, hey, if there's anything on our website that you can utilize, feel free to uh, steal it. Or I'm sorry, not to steal it, but pilfer it if you want. Uh, so we're not, it, it's free to them. Um, I've offered up um, if there's anything from any one of our committees as we give our directories out to the um, jurisdictions that if, call somebody up, phone a friend. That's what we do because their issues are the same as ours. You know, theirs are the same as ours. Uh, and the same struggles. But it's been a great weekend. I certainly want to say as I'm starting to wind down my term, uh, I couldn't ask for better help than the men and women sitting out here uh, today. The um, partnerships that I've had with the executive board, anytime I've had a question or uh, an issue, you jumped right on it. Um, Chip, again, thank you for stepping up and being my executive chair. Um, I, I certainly couldn't have had anyone better than, than you in that chair. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Carey, I wish you good luck come next year, uh, hence our bow tie Sunday, um, to, to, to show you my support for you. Um, I know you will have great success with uh, you and Charlie um, coming forward, um, and the association is going to be in good hands. Uh, again, because not only for your leadership, um, Joan, you're 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 coming up up through the ranks here. Um, you know, the same the, the the things that the auxiliary does for this state. Uh, a lot of folks don't want to recognize them for what they do, um, but they are powerhouses in their own departments. And I know what those auxiliaries do because of what I have in, in my department. I mean, small, small ladies, small group, uh, most of them in their late 60s and above, uh, and they show up for just about every event. Um, so it's tough. So I will close with saying thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you for helping me during my term. I look forward to seeing you at the rest of our events. Uh, and if I don't see you before you head to Ocean City, safe travels um, and home. And um, I'll see you later. Thank you. And with that, Chaplain Hetz. Good morning. Thank you. Welcome to Garrett County. Welcome to Grantsville. If you go down here on Main Street to the thrift shop, that was my elementary school. So welcome home. Um, in response to Mr. Steger's comment about the chaplains failing to uh, deal with things, I would observe that the Lord has blessed you with the beauty of the state. With the weather differences that are across this state. I left out of here on Friday evening with a whiteout, but that is Maryland. And that's Garrett County. And you've got beautiful weather today, and it's supposed to warm up even more tomorrow. And oh, by the way, I stopped at the Southern State store out here going out to fill up with gas yesterday. And the guy came out and filled my car. They still have service up here. So it's just one of those unique things. Let us join an attitude of prayer. Our Lord and our God, as we bring our meeting to a close today. Father, we thank you for your love, your wisdom, and your guidances. 
We've discussed the business and the needs of this association. Father, we ask that you would be with us as we travel home and to grant us traveling mercies as we go. Bless the food that's been prepared and bless all that we do and superintend us as we go into convention and get prepared for that. Father, we give you praise and thanks for all things. Amen.